Good evening. My name is Thurman Greco, and this is Woodstock uh, and Channel 23. And the program coming to you this evening is one about the chakra systems. You cannot discuss healing from a spiritual point of view without including the chakras. And it took me a long time to learn that because as a young person, I never really studied anything about the chakras. I came to know about chakras when I learned Reiki from Mary Ruth Van Landingham in Vienna, Virginia. The classes that she and other teachers offered in the room above her shop, Terra Krista, changed my life. I learned that a generic Usui Reiki session begins with the practitioner places her hands on your seventh chakra on your head and works down your body, finally ending at your feet. Years later, I learned more about chakras when I studied shamanic healing under Alberto Violdo at Kripalu in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Under these teachers, I didn't register for a chakra class. I signed up for a healing class under a different name. And in both of these classes, the chakra system was the foundation of the spiritual and physical healing in the curriculum. Although I'm using these two examples to illustrate my point, I took many classes over the years and had the same experience. And the journey went like this. I signed up for a course in some healing modality. And when I got into the class, received the study materials, and listening to the teachings, I realized the foundation of the course was chakras. I repeated this scenario many times over throughout the years because I'm a massage therapist, and continuing education is part of that career path. Your chakras connect with and enhance reflexology, Reiki, and other healing modalities. We know from basic reflexology your body is mirrored on your feet. And the same is true of the chakras. Each chakra has a specific reflex point on your feet. Your chakras are healing tools, each one working together with other chakras as a system. If one is unbalanced, it affects the entire system. And chakras communicate with one another as their energy moves up and down your spine from chakra to chakra. Your chakras communicate with those around you, with your chakras individually and through the energy systems of the universe. This communication system is astounding. Your chakra communication system is unlimited by space or boundaries. It takes you to the edge of the universe. Sometimes people seek healing when they are not comfortable in their bodies. Your body's comfort is a function of your chakras and how well they interact with one another. Your chakras connect with and enhance healing sessions such as reflexology, Reiki, and other healing modalities. When your chakra system is open and functioning well, your body is upbeat, stress-free, alert. Unbalanced chakra energy traveling from one chakra to another is stressful. You communicate with other people and the environment around you using your abdominal brain, cranial brain, energetic layers surrounding the physical body and your nervous system. Your cranial brain observes what happens around you. You form opinions, develop belief systems, and communicate with others using your body language spoken language, and written communication. You use your senses, your ears, eyes, intuition, nose, and skin. You feel pain, emotion, know when you are ill, afraid, or happy. Your abdominal brain sends information to your cranial brain. This continual flow from the digestive tract keeps it informed about what happens in your body. Your abdominal brain sends more information to your cranial brain than it receives in return. And this leads me to believe that the abdominal brain is more important than we realize. Reflexology fits into this spiritual communication system. When you receive Reiki, the power and the scope of the healing expands. When you receive reflexology, you experience more power from the session when chakra healing is included. Your seven major chakras are located along your spine. You also have other chakras in other parts of your physical body. 
They work with your abdominal brain, cranial brain, and central nervous system. A common illustration of the major chakra locations is found in almost every book, pamphlet, and magazine article on the subject. This illustration shows a frontal view of a person with the seven major chakras neatly lined up on the body, beginning with the first chakra located at the base of the spine, and each chakra illustration is a different color. The chakras are neatly drawn circles. If I were to draw the picture of the body with the chakra balls illustrated, I would show a spinal view of the body. For me, the chakras are lined up along your spine. The chakras reveal themselves to me as a morphal blobs of energy, changing shape and density from moment to moment to moment throughout your day. As you go about your day and sleep at night, the chakras move and shape shift in response to things that you do, think, feel, and observe. These chakras also change in response to information from other chakras and from your brains. In other words, your chakras continually re receive information and send it along. And your chakras guide you in your journey through life. And this connection affects your entire life. Now this is very interesting because the pictures always show these neat little round circles going up the body and they have different colors. I don't question that at all. What I, what I, how they are revealed to me is that they move as they work. And if you read books about chakras, you're going to find out that different writers of these books also receive the the impressions of the chakras in different ways. Uh, I was recently picked up a book by Cindy Dale and she has a book called The Little Book of Chakras. And in this book, in the introduction, she talks about seeing chakras when she was a child, way too young to know the word chakra. And it wasn't until she was later later in life that she realized that what she saw as a child was chakras. And she would see uh, large swaths of green or blue or red or orange or purple. And she, these would be around people. So she, the chakras reveal themselves to her in yet different ways. And of course a lot of that has to do with how different our eyesight is from one person to the next. So as you decide to learn about chakras, uh, I invite you to find out by reading how many different ways people actually do receive the information about chakras. Your chakras guide you through your journey through life, and this connection affects your entire life. When you receive reflexology, Reiki, and other healing, your body, mind, and spirit join through your chakras located throughout your body. The homeostasis created by a healing session balances all the systems in your body and you connect with all that is. Your chakras create your spiritual outlook. When you receive a healing session, it's helpful to know what each chakra means how it affects your daily life. And this opens your deeper layers and helps you recognize things about yourself, which you probably didn't know were important in your past, or didn't care about, or may have forgotten. This insight is a powerful healing tool for you. Your chakras build on one another. If one chakra is unbalanced, all your chakras are affected, involving your entire body. For example, an injury on the bottom of a foot may throw your spine off balance, changing the way you walk. When your first chakra is unbalanced, you may feel ungrounded, which affects how you deal with depression, which is a second chakra issue, which will affect your digestion, which is a third chakra issue, and so on. Sometimes you schedule reflexology, Reiki, or other healing sessions to feel better. Other times, you may want to take charge of your health or some specific aspect of your life. 
Yet another time, you may simply want to hop on the healing table, receive a session, and leave blissed out. But balanced chakras are essential to your good health. Although there are many ways to balance your chakras, there are two universal ways to balance them. Regular reflexology sessions offer homeostasis, which is the balance of all of your body systems. And Reiki sessions balance all your chakras. Whatever the motivation, a better session happens when the healer includes the chakras. Your mind, body, and spirit heal simultaneously. We are now going to discuss the first chakra, which is sometimes called your root chakra, and it's located at the base of your spine. Your first or root ch chakra is the reflex point for your first chakra on the heels of your feet. So you have this first chakra is at the base of your spine. That's where it is, it is located. But it, in your feet, the reflex point is on the heel of your foot. First chakra issues include fear, which is all a culprit on almost every disease, health issue, or life challenge. Fear prevents your good health. It's possible to be rational and still carry fear like baggage around. You bring fear from past lives. If your belief system doesn't include past life experiences, focus on issues from your childhood. You're gonna find plenty of them either way. Fear can also be present tense. I carried present tense fear for five years when I managed a food pantry. I finally came to terms with it and we became friends, Fear and I. We worked together and overcame obstacles. Present tense fear became a protective force in the middle of the trauma and the drama. Your first chakra is concerned with pain, tightness, restricted movement, inflexibility, and grounding is vital for a healthy first chakra. And the focus of your first chakra is grounding, protection, security, survival, your connection to earth and your community. And your first chakra discovery questions include, am I afraid of change? Am I controlling? Am I in my body? Can I receive and can I give? Do I cling to unhealthy relationships? Do I eat properly? Do I feel vulnerable? Is it hard to move ahead in life? These questions, if you, each one of the chakras, I have a list of questions. And you can realize when you are reading these questions, they aren't questions that you deal with all the time. But for example, am I afraid of change? That's an issue that many people are dealing with now as we go through these political changes in our country. So that's uh, being afraid of change is a first chakra issue that a person you don't encounter necessarily every day. But when you do encounter it, once you see these questions and you understand them, you can realize, okay, this is a first chakra issue for me, and you can begin to work your first chakra. Essential oils for your first chakra include patchouli, sandalwood, and thyme. And balancing your first chakra. You can tell whether your first chakra is balanced by observing your hips, knees, ankles, what is their range of movement? Set aside a few minutes regularly to med meditate on your balanced chakra system. Reflexology, Reiki, and chakra healing sessions balance your chakras. Stability is vital for a healthy first chakra. Listen to your body because it will never lie to you. It will tell you when your chakras need attention. For example, if you have a pain in the lower part of your body, if you have a sacroiliac pain, or if you have a knee pain, then that is a, those are first chakra issues. So when you have those discomforts, then you know that you need to work on your first chakra. And in addition to the other things that you need to do to deal with the pain. 
Your first chakra governs your immune system, your lower digestive tract, and your skeletal system. Work your first chakra for increased awareness. When you ask your reflexologist, Reiki practitioner, or healer to focus on your first chakra, the result is a gift. There is an affir affirmation for a first chakra. I am myself, a spiritual human embracing life. Your second chakra, sometimes called your sacral chakra, is in your abdomen, about two inches below your navel. Your second chakra reflex point is on the lower half of the instep of both of your feet. Your bladder, your circulatory system, kidneys, and reproductive system reflex points are part of your second chakra. Second chakra issues include creativity, control, finances, letting go, sexuality, and guilt. And this is how different, I'm going to give you an example now of how different chakras become important in different situations. I am trying to learn to be more creative. That is a second chakra issue. So I know, and it helps for me to be aware of this, that when I'm trying to learn to draw and paint, that I am, in, I am in a second chakra, a frame of mind there. At one extreme of the second chakra, there's a danger of becoming overcome with guilt. And at the other extreme lies hedonism. Your second chakra focus is learning to feel safe in your human body, identifying and satisfying your basic needs, developing healthy sexual experiences and self-respect. And your second chakra discovery questions are, am I addicted to pleasure? Are my boundaries rigid? Can I release negative feelings when it's time? Do I allow myself to rest when my body is tired? Have you ever known somebody that when they get tired and they get overtired and they won't rest? That's a second chakra issue. Do I seek supportive relationships? Do I take care of my body with nutritious foods and beverages? And what feelings am I clutching? What issues drain me? Essential oils for my second chakra include clary sage, geranium, and cedar wood. Balancing the second chakra. You need a balanced second chakra to be healthy. Centering is the operative word here. When you center your second chakra, you discover a sense of self. Your second chakra becomes a sacred space when your emotional, sexual, and spiritual selves blend and become creative. To know how centered your second chakra is, observe your lower back. Is there a curvature in your lower spine? Are you in pain? And how balanced is your gait? Lower back pain and health issues tell when your second chakra needs balancing. One of the things when I was learning, uh, when I was a student at uh, Potomac Myotherapy Institute, which was the massage school that I went to, is we learned to look at people's spines when they were walking down the street, or if you're, at the, if you're going down the sidewalk and you notice people and you notice their limps and you notice how the curvature of the spine is, you can tell after a while this person has first chakra issues, this person has seventh, this person has shoulder issues. You can tell those and you can realize what the spirituality of their issues is by, by looking at the spine. Your second chakra becomes a sacred space when your emotional, sexual, and spiritual selves blend and become creative. To know how centered your second chakra is, observe your lower back. Is there a curvature in your spine? Are you in pain and how balanced is your gait? Lower back pain and health issues tell you when your second chakra needs balancing. Reflexology, Reiki, and chakra healing sessions balance all of your body systems. Meditation promotes a balanced sacred chakra. Focus on a centered state for a few minutes daily for a positive, energetic, emotional, and physical sense of self. When your second chakra is balanced, 
you can live with yourself and work with your second chakra to find yourself. Your second chakra houses your emotional balance and your self-esteem. A balanced ch second chakra brings you home to creation itself. That's a very, that's extremely powerful. For me, that was very powerful. Your second chakra governs your urinary system, your reproductive organs, your digestive fluids, bladder, intestines, kidneys, lower back, and your reproductive organs. Work your second chakra for clear creativity, healthy relationships, and to find yourself. A second chakra affirmation says, I feel a connection to my creativity, a pathway to my identity. My third chakra, your third chakra is sometimes called your solar plexus chakra. It's located in the area of your solar plexus, which is below your sternum and above your navel. The reflex point for your third chakra is on the upper half of the instep, below the ball of the foot on both feet. This is where you find your gallbladder, intestines, liver, spleen, stomach, and stomach cavities. Your third chakra issues include anger, self-esteem, shame, and victimization. Anger is a third chakra issue because that's where much anger is stored. Depending upon how your chakra is balanced, this emotion can range from no energy to excessive energy. Third chakra, anger forces on self-esteem because your third chakra governs power. So what this says is you experience anger sometimes in your third chakra, but that's a different kind of anger than when you experience anger in your first chakra or your second chakra. Anger and the need for power live in the, third, in the solar plexus, which is the home of your third chakra. You feel this chakra as butterflies when you are nervous. Your third chakra closely connects to your first and second chakras as your energy moves up and down the spine from the base. When your energy reaches your third chakra, it takes shape and it develops a vocabulary as it finds its voice. Your third chakra is where you build your truth and you form your authority. And this is where you integrate your power into your daily life. And the third chakra is your voice. I'm going to explain that a little bit because this is very important and I don't want it to just slip by without noticing it. When you start off with a thought or a concept, this thought or a concept may begin with you, or someone may have told you something that made you think of it, or maybe you read it in a book or saw it on television or whatever, but you have a thought. And it begins in your first chakra. And it travels up your second chakra, and finally, when it gets to the third chakra, that's when it begins to find a voice. And you know, people who write, uh, learn. I, this was something that I never thought about it, but it definitely is real, and it is definitely real with me and, and all the other writers that I know, and that is that you will have a project or you will have something in your mind that you're working on and you haven't quite got it formulated. And sometimes it's, you're not even ready to write anything. It's just there. It's in your body and it's creativity, it's happening, it's being created. And finally, when it reaches the third chakra, then you are ready to talk about it or write about it, or in the case of, of a, a landscape painter, paint the landscape, or in the case of uh, someone who plays drums in a band or whatever. This is, this is where it begins, this is where the action begins. The third chakra focus is anger, self-esteem, shame, and victimization. And third chakra discovery questions are, am I able to carry decisions and plans to fruition? Do I act on my own? 
Do I have to be right in every decision? Do I lack willpower? Do I think for myself? Do other people control my life? And how important is fear in my life? And must I always be the center of attention? Essential oils for your third chakra include basil, juniper, and peppermint. And a balanced third chakra is critical to good health. Reflexology, Reiki, and chakra healing sessions balance your chakras. Meditation is a useful balancing tool for your third chakra. An unbalanced third chakra affects your total body through its posture, body language, and spiritual alignment. Your thoughts find your voice in your solar plexus. Meditate on your third chakra to diminish your fears and to increase your power. And your third chakra governs your gallbladder, liver, pancreas, solar plexus, spleen, and stomach. And your third chakra is an important point. This is where your third, your third chakra works to develop everything in your life. It's like things come together with the third chakra. And so, you know, this is kind of like the hub. You have your first chakra, which of course is your foundation, and then you have your, your top chakra up here, which is your connection to, to immortality and, and your God and your creativity. But the third chakra is your hub. So you work your third chakra for self-respect, self-discovery, and self-knowledge. And this is where you find your voice of truth. That's, that's a very, very, um, that's a big deal. Affirmation, I experience my self-esteem and self-empowerment as I achieve my soul purpose. So your fourth chakra is also known as your heart chakra and it's found in the center of your chest. Your fourth chakra reflex point is found on the balls of both feet. This is where you find the reflex points of your breasts, heart, lungs, thymus, shoulders, and your reflex points. Your heart chakra is your thoughts and dreams become a language when your fourth chakra builds on your lower three. That moment of inspiration that you experienced in your first chakra is now written paragraphs. So what we just said was you had this kernel of a thought in your first chakra, and when you finally got it to your third chakra, you were able to to build words or you were able to put some, some colors on the canvas or whatever, but then you really developed it with your heart chakra. And actually that's where, that's where in your fourth, fourth chakra, your heart chakra, that's where your truth decides, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live with this. I can live with this, this is true for me, this is gonna work for me. So what was a few words in your third chakra is now written paragraphs. It is the beginning of the book. Your fourth chakra energetically combines your spiritual and physical bodies with their issues, and your goal is unconditioned love. An excellent way to learn about unconditional love is to observe cats and dogs, and they practice unconditional love routinely. And that's very, very true, and it's so difficult for people to practice unconditional love. And we are experiencing this throughout our planet this year. I, we are all really having a tough time with this. Your heart chakra attacks uh, relationships and it exposes you to fear, forgiveness, grief, intimacy, risk, and sensitivity. In the years after 2008, when our country's economy tanked, I managed a food pantry where I experienced fear, forgiveness, grief, intimacy, risk, and sensitivity. And it wasn't until this moment that I realized what an impact this experience with hunger in a food pantry had on my heart chakra. Because I was working out of that heart chakra a lot. I, I was really using that heart chakra quite, 
quite a bit. The wisdom of this experience is that our daily activities directly impact us, both physically and spiritually, and our chakra experiences stay with us day after day. Grief is also a fourth chakra issue, blocking fourth chakra energy. Releasing pain and wounding opens your heart. The state of your fourth chakra reveals itself in your posture. And we see this now because of the pandemic. There are so many people have lost someone, and, and we all know someone that, ha that has not with us anymore. And then when you turn on the television or you turn on the radio or you read the newspaper, you, you hear the voices of these people who have lost a loved one and they are experiencing this grief and it, and it is staying with them. It's very, very hard to overcome. And of course, grief doesn't have to be uh, just the loss of a person's life. You can grieve over all kinds of things. You, could have gr you can grieve over the house that you wanted and never had. You could grieve over the job that you wanted and never had. You could grieve, you know, there are many things that you can grieve about. You can grieve about a relationship to a parent that was not satisfying. Uh, you wanted to have a good relationship possibly with your mother or your father, but that didn't happen. And so that's just how that played out. So this is, but that's how, that affects what's happening uh, in the chakras. Grief, uh, belief, grief releases pain. That's really what grief does. Gr we have pain locked from whatever reason, and then when you begin to grieve, the pain gets relieved. It's like a flower opening up and releasing these intense uh, feelings. Wounding. We've all experienced things that wound us. And when we finally begin to experience this wounding, then we, we have this heart chakra experience. So the state of your fourth chakra reveals itself in your posture. And it really does. Have you seen people that are bent over? Have you seen people who stand almost too straight with the, the jaw sticking out? Have you seen people who, who cannot? With heart chakra issues, you may be rigid, you may be round-shouldered, you may be sunken-chested, and you may be stiff. Unbalanced fourth chakra issues are found in heart, respiratory, and shoulder health problems, and heart surgery directly impacts your, your heart chakra. And of course now with the coronavirus, that is a respiratory situation, it is a heart thing. So this, uh, many of these situations are coming forth now. And the fourth chakra for focus is forgiveness, intimacy, personal power, and self-esteem. And some questions are, am I hiding from others? Am I living a divided life? Can I express my emotions? Do I fear rejection? Do I have problems forgiving people? Do I have issues giving and receiving love? Have I created a protective barrier around my heart? Is it physically or emotionally painful to move forward in life? And essential oils for your fourth chakra include rose, rosemary, and langley. And balancing your fourth chakra. A fourth chakra, which is balanced, is essential for your good health. Reflexology sessions, Reiki, and chakra healing balance your chakras. Guided meditations focusing on heart openings and breathing influence your heart chakra balance. Your fourth chakra governs blood circulation, blood pressure, your heart, Healings concentrating on your heart encourage grief release. In your fourth chakra, you find a straighter body, an open heart, and the energy to give. And you work your fourth chakra 
as a bridge between your physical and spiritual bodies. I just, I, this to me, this is just an amazing thing. This is where, this is where you get connected to your spiritual body through your heart chakra. And an affirmation is, I love life as I experience compassion and connection with myself and others. And your fifth chakra, or throat chakra, is on your neck between your collarbone and larynx. Your fifth chakra reflex point is located on the necks of the toes of both feet. And they include your ears, gums, jaw, mouth, neck, teeth, throat, and thyroid. And your fifth chakra is located along the pathway between your heart your fourth chakra, your third eye, which is your sixth chakra, and your mind, which is your seventh chakra. And fifth chakra issues include, your fifth chakra develops issues when you can accept a truth or concept in the heart, but not in your mind. And of course, we all, have, we all have things that we're able to, we can see it happening here, but that's as far as it's going to go. So that creates, that creates problems. Issues include communication, listening, self-expression, authenticity. The focus of your fifth chakra is communication, developing listening on different levels. I saw this happening after the tragedy of 9-11. Many of my client partners experienced throat chakra issues. They had trouble voicing their fears and their concerns, and listening on different levels was difficult. And some people still have these issues. A fifth chakra focus is expressing your will and your personal strength, respecting your truth, and harmonious energy flow. Your fifth chakra discovery questions are, am I afraid to step into my power? Am I sometimes unable to speak? Am I unable to express my creative potential? Can I keep a promise? Do I cough a lot? Do I express myself honestly? Do I fear failure? Do I use my voice to help or hurt others? Essential oils for your fifth chakra include lavender, lemon, and Roman chamomile. Your throat chakra, your fifth chakra, is located along the pathway between your heart and your third eye and your mind. And balancing your fifth chakra, with a balanced fifth chakra, you listen in ways that you could not listen before. You are more aware of your energetic surroundings and can sense harmonic, vib harmonic vibrations around you. A balanced fifth chakra is essential to your good health. Reflexology, Reiki, and chakra healing balance your systems and your chakras, critical when working for your fifth chakra. Now, this is where people do animal communication out of this fifth chakra because they can they can sense these vibrations. They can, when you, when you do animal communication, you may actually hear something, or you may actually feel something. And that's a, that is a hearing, that is a way of hearing through your fifth chakra, and they become sensitive to that. And you can also see it, hear it, feel it, touch it, and in some cases, the animal will literally speak to you. So, and this not only happens with animal communication, but it happens with people too. And so, when you, for example, go to a psychic who is going to talk to you about Aunt, Fre Aunt Frida and Uncle Joe or whatever, that person is able through the fifth chakra to feel and hear and see what it is that you need to have felt 
and seen and touched and that sort of thing. And we all have those capabilities. It's just whether or not you're going to pursue them. So with a balanced fifth chakra, you do hear things that you didn't hear before. And you know, if you've ever walked into a room, say you've walked into a room and all of a sudden there are a lot of, there's a lot of people there and all of a sudden you get feelings about it. These are the unspoken words. Nobody's coming up to you and saying, listen, we're all happy here or we're all angry here or we're all whatever, but you get this feeling. This is the unspoken word. This is your fifth chakra. You are more aware of your energetic surroundings and you can sense harmonic vibrations around you. A balanced fifth chakra is essential to your good health. Reflexology, Reiki, and chakra healing balance your chakras, critical when working with your fifth chakra. Cleanses remove toxins. As they leave, intuitive communication becomes more comfortable. Sounds bombard so much of our lives. Luxuriate for a few minutes regularly as you focus inward without any sound. Silent meditation helps you balance your throat chakra and helps you travel to the edge of the universe. It's easy to tell how centered your fifth chakra is when you observe your neck. Does it hurt? Your fifth chakra governs your esophagus, your jaw, your neck, your throat, your voice, and your windpipe. And you work your inner chakra, your fifth chakra for inner peace through deep listening. Vibrations are the basis of your fifth chakra. As you become aware of these sounds, they bring dramatic change. And the answer to this age-old question that we all ask, what is my truth, is here in the fifth chakra. And your affirmation for your fifth chakra is, I speak my truth. Your sixth chakra, or third eye chakra, is located on your forehead between your eyebrows. Your sixth chakra of reflex point is located on the lower parts of your toe pads. And your ears, eyes, pineal gland, and sinuses are found here. Sixth chakra issues include illusion and delusion, insight and denial intuition, psychic abilities, trust, and visualizations. Tuning into the conscious and subconscious mind is a sixth chakra issue. The goal is a balance between the two. At one extreme, your brain functions on the rational level only. When this happens, you have trouble visualizing things mentally. Subtle communication is difficult to understand. At this point, you may also have problems recognizing messages in dreams or intuitive thoughts. At the other end of the spectrum, you may live in a fantasy world and even be delusional. And your sixth chakra focus is balance, openness, imagination, awareness of personal energy, and nourishing yourself. And your sixth chakra discovery questions are, Am I able to turn my visions into realities? Am I gaining insight into myself? Can I encourage intuitive dreams? And can I see the bigger picture? Can I set aside time for self-reflection? And do I block my creative ideas? Do I know when my, when my uh, ego is in charge? And does my heart agree with my mind? And essential oils for your sixth chakra include bergamot, orange, and vanilla. Balancing your sixth chakra is this. With a healthy sixth chakra, you adjust the intuitive and the irrational. It is in tune with your senses as well as your conscious and subconscious mind. Your sixth chakra regulates the energy channels of your other chakras. Reflexology, Reiki, chakra healing sessions 
balance your body systems. Distance Reiki works well if you have six chakra issues. When you restore your six chakra balance, meditate on the ocean to calm your overactive mind. As you gain insight into yourself, spiritual growth and development begin. Concentration, insight, peace, perception, and understanding can be a part of your life. To know how centered your sixth chakra is, observe your eyes and ears. Other issues related to sixth chakra imbalances include depression, despair, frequent nightmares, insomnia, and other sleep-related items. Your sixth chakra governs eyesight, hearing, and smell. And this is an important thing that I did include this in this chapter, and I think it's important. If you, and the first time you hear this, you may not have noticed that on the very first page or two, I talked about dep depression being a second chakra issue. And then here, it is also a sixth chakra issue. Sometimes our issues affect a different chakra and when they affect when they depression in the second chakra affects a person differently than it affects the person on the sixth chakra the same thing as anger in a first chakra and anger in the third chakra express themselves in two totally different ways so if you're going to study chakras or if you're going to work with a person or, or have a friend who has issues of depression, it may help you to try to, to try to observe, is this a second chakra depression or is this a sixth chakra depression? Because it can, it can help you and the person as well. To know how centered your sixth chakra is, look at your eyes and ears. Other issues related to six chakra imbalances include depression, despair, frequent nightmares, insomnia, and other sleep-related problems. And it goes without saying that when you do not sleep, it is because there is something wrong in your life. Your six chakra governs eyesight, hearing, and smell. Work your six chakra to clear out past issues and problems. Six chakra healing makes way for your new life waiting to emerge. And you know, clearing out past, past uh, issues and problems, sometimes we express that when we, when we clean the house. We're getting rid of a bunch of stuff. We're trying to, just to solve our problems. An affirmation is, I see truth because I'm open to the ideas of others. Your seventh chakra, or cha crown chakra, is located at the top of your head. And your seventh chakra reflex point is on the tips of your toes. And this is where you'll find your central nervous system, your cranial brain, and your hair. Seventh chakra issues are this. When you realize divine guidance is instrumental in your life, you understand gratitude and non-attachment. Seventh chakra issues include living in the present, non-attachment, and selflessness. You overcome doubt, fear, negative attitudes, and pain. And your chakras build on one another when they encourage universal energy flow. Blockages in one or more of the chakras make this flow difficult to impossible. A seventh chakra issue is the ability to live in the moment. Symptoms of an unbalanced seventh chakra include chronic migraine headaches, compulsive behavior, denying your body some of its basic needs, drug abuse, rigid beliefs, and spiritual extremism. Can I take a break right now? Sure. I think I'm gonna... Oh, I'm feeling really hot.